So today I'm going to show you how to use the maggots and the botfly larvae and incorporate them into wounds. I'll show you how to do them on my hand, but you can reproduce them anywhere else on the body. These are really simple to do. Hopefully get something from this and enjoy. We'll start with the botfly infestation first. So what you want to do is take one of the botflies that we made last time and you want to cut it up into pieces. And what this does is just sort of help with the illusion that they're coming out from the inside of your body. So what I normally do is sort of just cut the head off one of them like that. And then you can cut one outer diagonal if you want to. So cut a diagonal chunk out of the body. You can put those pieces to the side now. And what we want to do is just build up a really simple wound or a couple of mounds of wax. So. What I'll do is put a bit of spirit gum down on my hand first. So I might just put one here to begin with. And then maybe one up here, a little bit higher up the hand. And just scoop out a piece of nose and scar wax here. It doesn't have to be too large. Once that's tacky, you can apply the ball and just begin to kind of smooth it out. And then just repeat that process again up here on this part. And once you've sort of roughly smoothed those out, you can go back in with a bit of petroleum jelly now and smooth those down. So I'll just go in and dab over the top of these just to get rid of that shine. Once I'm happy with that, I go back in with the Skin Illustrator palette, just the rose adjuster here, and just add a little bit of color into that nose and scar wax to help it kind of blend back into my skin color. If they're not exactly the same color as your skin, it's not necessarily a problem. I mean, normally a little raised area like this in the skin might be somewhat lighter in color as well. If you wanted to, you could go in and sort of exaggerate some of the redness around the outside as well. So I might go in and just do that a little bit. So just lightly kind of dab around the outside just to sort of create or simulate a bit of irritation, I guess. I have these sort of cake decorating tools here that I use. So it's just got a rounded end like this. And you want to create the indentation that the worm's sort of poking out of. So I normally get the tip and then just dip it in a bit of petroleum jelly like that. And then go in and create the hole. So this one here, I'll make the head of the bot fly poke out of. So just gently kind of twist it in there. Once you've created the hole like this, just before you put the bot fly in, what I normally do is just go in with a little bit of the dark blood red color and just add that to the inside of the wound. So now you've created the kind of bloodied inside of the wound. What you can do is grab that sort of bot fly piece that you cut up before and just stick that in the middle like so. That's already looking kind of gross now. It sort of almost looks a bit like an eyeball as well. So what I'll do now is just repeat that process for these two mounds as well using the tail part of the bot fly. That's it there looking pretty disgusting. What you can do to complete this look now is just grab a little bit of blood and just sparingly put a few drops just along the bottom as if there's a little bit of blood seeping out of the wounds. So what I normally do is paint just a small amount of it around the bottom edge. You could actually paint, I guess, some up onto the botfly body itself as well. And then just go back in with a tissue now and mop up a little bit of that blood, not all of it. So that's a really simple wound that you can do there and apply to any part of the body. You could do this on the forehead as well, but that's my bot fly infestation. If you wanted to kind of gross people out, you could go and get a pair of those surgical tweezers and actually start pulling these guys out. 
it actually looks pretty disgusting. I've got um, just a pair here, so you could start grabbing these and sort of tugging at them and pulling them out of the wound. It looks pretty gross. But it's also really simple to do. Thanks for watching. Similarly to the last wound, the process is pretty much identical. The only thing that's different really is the shape of the wound. So when we're using maggots this time, what we want to do is sort of create the illusion that some of the flesh has been eaten away. So what I normally do is create a large amount of wax and then sort of attack it in smaller areas. So you ended up with these little kind of pitted areas as if the maggots have eaten away at the flesh. I'll start by sort of sticking a piece down here first. Then again, once you're sort of happy with the shape, go in with a bit of petroleum jelly on the end of your finger and just smooth that out. I think it's more important just to get the edges of this smooth. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to do this top area. I've left some indentation because I'm going to go in with my sculpting tools now and actually kind of attack little parts of it. So, so long as you're sort of relatively happy with the edges and the smoothness of those, that's really what's important with this particular type of wound. I'm now happy with that. So what I'll go in and do is get my sculpting tools and just sort of start chipping away at little areas of it I guess. What you want to do is just I guess create sort of holes in the nose and scar wax. You don't really want to remove too much of it. Leaving little bits of the nose and scar wax behind to kind of disguise the texture of your skin is a good thing. So I'm just going to go in and sort of create some kind of indentation areas. I'm happy with that texture now, so what I'll do is just go in and sort of create some, I guess, rotting flesh on the inside there, and then begin to kind of place the maggots on the inside of the wound. This coloured scar wax on this part of my hand isn't too bad as far as colour matching goes, so I'll just wash over it very lightly with pink and then go back in and start painting the inside details. I'm just going to start with some of this sort of vile bile colour here, which is sort of like a khaki colour, and just a bit of the yellow as well. And I'm just going to go in now and darken up some of the areas with a bit of the cedar brown from the Skin Illustrator palette. Not too many spots, just a couple. Once you're happy with the brown and kind of pussy colours, I normally go in now with the rose adjuster and just add a bit of irritation around the outside and then again just with the blood tone and paint the inside edge. So the final step now is to put some maggots inside of this wound. So again, like the botfly larvae, it's a lot easier if you cut a couple of them in half just to make it look like they're coming out from the inside of the body. So I'll start placing those randomly inside the wound now. And you generally don't need anything to stick these guys down. They should actually just stick inside the wax without a problem.
that's it there. You can pretty much put in as many maggots as you want to. I'm going to probably leave it like this. If you wanted to as well, you could leave the wound like this too. You don't necessarily need to actually put blood in there. What I find, however, is if you've got a bit of glycerin or a bit of lube, if you just sort of wet the inside of the wound just slightly, that normally helps with the effect as well. And then if you want to, you can add sort of just a couple or stick a couple down on the outside here as well. And they normally just stick by themselves. If you want to, you can add a little bit of spirit gum just to kind of help hold them down as well. But that's it there. That is my maggot infested wound with rotting flesh. Thanks for watching.